respect each other and we'll disagree. But I do think that there, is, there are certain lines in the sand, at least for me. Uh, now maybe, I mean, I speak first and foremost as a Christian who looks at the world through the lens of the cross, which means that I always put the weak at the center of how I view the world. 25th chapter of Matthew, 44th verse is no joke. It's the least of these, it's the poor, it's the orphan, it's the widow, it's the workers, it's the women messing with the dealing with domestic violence. That's the weak. You can make decisions that side with the strong. I love Clarence Thomas. He's wrong when he sides with the strong against the weak. I can love him and still say he's wrong as three shoes. Now, nearly every leader that we have has to be able to make decisions in such a way that they convince persons that they're siding with the weak against the strong. How come? Because the strong already have enough folk defending them. That's the history of the Black Freedom Movement. So if, if, if Brother Jeff says, I was weak, I made an heir, I sided with the strong against the weak, I say, fine, let's try to do it less often. If I do that, I need to be criticized. It's not personal, it's a matter of principle. But when you tell people you're siding with the weak and you're really siding with the strong, then you got a real problem. Because then you're deceiving people. And part of the problem of our leaders, and this is the big difference between the leaders of the 60s and the politicians of the 90s. When Malcolm stood over here on this corner and said the white man is a devil,